In this video, we're going to explain some applications and examples of Stokes' theorem. So the first um, case is when the boundary of M is empty. So if the boundary of M is empty, then I know I can just write down what Stokes' theorem tells me. And because the boundary of M is empty, the right-hand side is going to be zero. So what this tells me is that integrals of exact forms um, on manifolds without boundary are always zero. So an example of this, um, let's consider the uh, differential form um, x dx plus y dy, which is d of uh, 1 half x squared plus y squared. d of uh, 1 half x squared, let's just write this as 1 half x plus 1 half y squared. Um, and if I integrate this over, for example, um, the unit sphere in R2, which is a manifold without boundary in R2, uh, then I'm going to get zero. So let's parameterize this by um, V of t is cosine t sine t. Then d phi uh, is the map negative sine t cosine t. And so phi pullback of, let's call this form omega, is, um, well, actually, let's not call it omega. Let's call it um, d omega. If you pull back of d omega is negative sine t cosine t times x, y. So x here is cosine t, y is sine t, um, dt. And what I end up getting is um, negative sine t cosine t plus cosine t sine t dt. This is, in fact, just the zero form. So when I integrate it um, over this uh, circle, or over anything for that matter, I'm going to get zero. Um, I could integrate other forms that are also closed. So for example, like another example would just be x dx, which is d of 1 half x squared. Uh, in this case, I would be integrating from 0 to 2 pi, um, just so this, this term here would be 0, and I'd be integrating negative sine t cosine t dt. And this would be something like, um, uh, let's see, I could do this. This could be cos uh, 1 half cosine squared t from 0 to 2 pi, but that's going to evaluate to 0. Um, so any, any exact form I plug in, uh, is going to be zero just by this argument here. So um, I can also sort of flip this around and try and understand what um, the integral of a closed form is going to look like. So if um, so, here I use something I understood about the boundary. The boundary is empty. Now I'm going to use something I understand about the form. So the integral over the boundary of m of omega is the same thing as integral of m over d omega. So if d omega is equal to 0, then this is just 0. So what I get is that the integral of closed forms on boundaries are 0. So if I pick any closed form, like, um, you know, as an example, I could pick this one. Um, but maybe let's pick something uh, that's closed but not exact. So, um, so it, it'll be hard for me to find something like that that's a differential form on R2 by the Poincaré lemma, but um, let's consider negative y over x squared plus y squared dx plus x over x squared plus y squared dy. So this is a one form on R2 minus the origin. Um, and then this form is closed. So you, you'll actually check that on a worksheet. Um, and its integral over uh, bo a boundary is going to be 0. So this form is not defined at the origin. So if I integrate it over this circle um, that contains the origin, it, that's not actually the boundary of uh, a manifold on which this differential form is defined. Remember, it's not defined at the origin. But if I, um, if I were to pick a different circle, let's say like this circle centered at um, well, maybe, 
I don't know what would be easy to integrate. Um, if I were to integrate around some circle centered over here, I'm going to actually get zero. Um, and you know, maybe, maybe that's an interval you want to set up, but if it's not, all you need to do is use Stokes theorem to show that, um, because this form is closed, you're going to get the same thing as the integral around, um, as the integral over this one form, the D of this one form over this disc and D of this one form is, is zero. So that's an easy way to show, um, that the integral of a closed form is zero. So the final, um, the final thing I want to mention is that if you have a, um, a differential form that is, so, so like you can use Stokes theorem to compute um, values of integrals based on values of other integrals. So an example, is say I want to integrate, um, let's just think simple, negative y dx plus, um, let's just do negative y dx over like this um, circle of radius two. So it's circle of radius two centered at the origin. So, and say I already know its value on this circle of radius one centered at the origin. So it may or may not be easier. In this case, it probably wouldn't be easier, but I could just compute the value over this integral, um, the value of the integral over this circle, and then I can add to it the value of um, the integral of d omega over this region, and I'll get the value of the integral over the blue region. So what I'm saying is, so I call this C1, um, C2, and I call this region uh, R, then Stokes theorem tells me that the integral over R of D omega is equal to the integral over C1 of omega, and I'm going to um, introduce a minus sign because uh, C2 isn't oriented properly to be the boundary, it's oriented opposite, um, the integral over C2 of omega. So I can rearrange this and get that the integral over C1 of omega is equal to the integral over R of D omega plus the integral over C2 of omega. So this might not seem very um, like earth shattering in the case of integrals in the plane, but if you have um, a differential form that's not defined at a single point or um, where you don't really understand these curves very well, I mean, here the curves are pretty simple, uh, you can you can use this to great effect in three and higher dimensions. So what I mean is, um, for example, if omega is defined on um, R3 minus the origin, for example, I can always, so, it's, it's omega is a one form, um, so it's, I'm not allowed to integrate through curves um, that go through that point, but say I have some curve here, uh, let's make it, you know, I wanna integrate over some, some weird and wacky curve. Maybe there's some nice surface I can arrange, uh, you know, that doesn't pass through the origin and I can, but connects my, um, my wacky purple curve to something nicer that's a that, like this red curve, for example. Um, and so even if omega isn't defined at certain points, like even if it's not defined at several points, for example, um, I can still use Stokes theorem if for some reason I understand um, what omega has to has to restrict to on this red part. So um, so a good example would be like, i.e. if omega is written only in terms of um, of uh, dx and, or sorry, x, x, dx, y, and dy, um, then you can take the integral of omega over any curve in the, like, that's parallel to the x, y plane, and you can then um, know that the integral of d omega will, over any um, surface that, that 
uh, has a d by dz component is going to be zero because you'll only see dx and dy in d omega. So the integral over this red part would be zero, and then I can use um, Stokes' theorem to get the integral of omega over any other weird curve like this.